welcome to the next episode of uh, the Foss North Pod. Um, today we're going to speak a bit about the Creative Commons licenses. So, Gina, take it away. Okay, thank you. So, yes, exactly. Uh, it will be about Creative Commons. You can see here their logo with a heart. Uh, so, what problem does this do those uh, licenses solve? Uh, when artwork is created, it's automatically under the author's copyright. The copyright enables the author to say who can do what with their artwork. Uh, and then instead of granting rights to every user separately, they can use a Creative Commons license for their artwork. That way, everyone knows how they are allowed to use that, uh, that artwork from this uh, author. And... Uh, the, the license may not be revoked. Uh, anyone who receives the license uh, may rely on it, even if the author stops distributing it. So what do people license but under it, the creative? Is, is this different from uh, what What would you do otherwise if you create uh, some, some artwork? Would you sell it to some uh, agency? or? So normally you would then uh, license is per per user basically so either if you have a picture you sell it to to a customer and they can do something with it but you uh, this way it's it's nice because you can you can slap this license on it and then uh, you don't need to deal with the with each and every user asking for permission all right yeah so what do people license under the cr creative commons uh, contrary to the other licenses which we uh, which we had in this uh, series, uh, it's not f not really for code, but it's for educational material. People license art uh, under it, books, photos, music, videos, s different tools. Even so, if you if you create a tool, you can uh, you can license it under this 3d models uh, you can find 3d models under this license sometimes scientific re research a lot of government open data is uh, under this license and other mostly digital creative works uh, so a little bit of history uh, not much but the organization was founded in 2001 by lawrence lessig Hall, Abelson, and Eric Elder, Eldred, <laughs> I think. And at least at the beginning, uh, Aaron Schwartz, who is quite famous, uh, or was quite famous, was uh, one of the early architects of the Creative Commons, so until he uh, committed suicide. Uh, the first set of copyright right licenses uh, were released in December 2002 and as of today there are about 1.6 billion works licensed under this uh, those various creative command licenses uh, Flickr sticks out uh, with their, they alone host about 415 million photos uh, under the creative commons license they have a nice search for it uh, and there are a lot of good things to see there. Is, is that a requirement to put photos on Flickr that you license them in this way? No, it's it's up to you. You can choose uh, a normal uh, license or one of the Creative Commons licenses. The The nice part is that you can choose it. You, it it's easy to choose and you can make it uh, de your default license if you upload to Flickr, for example. That's what I'm doing. I think you can do the same for uh, for YouTube. They they have a Creative Commons license and the YouTube standard license or something when you upload there. Oh yeah, I think our stuff is under the Creative Commons on YouTube, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. It it should be. Yeah, <laughs> yeah at least it should be. Yes, that's true. So here is a picture of those founders. So you can see mostly older guys. Uh, so, I don't think Aaron was that old. <laughs> no, no, that, that's the only, uh, but he's no more, so yeah, but that's true. He's, he was the exception, the teenager. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then 
let's talk about the Creative Commons license spectrum because there are a lot of those uh, licenses. And I found on Wikipedia a nice overview over them in one picture where you can see the spectrum the where on the top you have public more public, public domain uh, at the bottom all right reserved then on the left side it indicates use case the use cases allowed on the right side uh, the license components because each license it, it can be built up of out of components uh, the dark green area indicate free cultural work compatible licenses, uh, so you can combine it with with other things. And uh, the the two green areas compatibility with the remix culture. Basic, yeah, that's kind of it. Uh, then, what do all those symbols which we've seen mean? So let's let's go through through them through a couple of combination to to get uh, a nice overview so this logo is just the creative commons logo you can use it to indicate that you are licensing your artwork under the creative commons license uh, and to signify which one uh, of the licenses you want to use you combine it with one or more of the other logos so the uh, this one is uh, lets you uh, uh, so it's the attribution license or CC by uh, it lets you others distribute remix adapt and build upon your work even commercially so as long as they credit you for the original creation uh, this is the most accommodating of of the licenses offered for, for maximum freedom, basically. And, and this is basically yeah. a, a permissive license, isn't it? If, if you compare the, it to, to the earlier licenses we've spoken about. That is true, yes. Uh, so it doesn't force your artwork, artwork to be also under the same license and so on. So you just need to, uh, to say, attribute who's the original author and you can do whatever you want with it. Then there's a. Uh, I found the. Sorry to interrupt. The, the, I found that the attribution, for example, with Flickr, uh, some companies, organizations, and stuff have, have used some of my photos on Flickr. And it still it seems to be tricky to attribute for some people, which is confusing for me. But <laughs> uh, uh, another thing is that. I do get a lot of questions, uh, not a lot, but I do get some questions regarding my photos on Flickr, regarding the license. And I think Creative Commons has made a great job in, in making the license easy to read and using pictograms to, to make it easy to understand. Still, uh, we get questions, can I use your photo? Yeah, it's on the Creative Commons, <laughs> so yeah. you can, but it's, yes. it's funny. Yeah, I get that also sometimes, but I think people just want to be cautious to not do something wrong. Yeah. Okay, then the attribution share alike. So that's a combination of the attribution and the share alike. So the license lets others remix, adapt and build upon your work, even for commercial purposes, as long as they credit you, you and license their new creations under the identical terms. So they, this is not a permissive license. This is one of those copyleft-like uh, licenses where you, if you take and reuse uh, someone else's, which is, which is under this license, you also need to, uh, to license your own stuff under this share-alike license, basically. But you, you could release something under the share alike license without attribution, right? Is that possible? I suppose it should be possible. Yes, yes, it should. Yeah, yes, it is. I think I took uh, the examples from the website uh, because I think they they chose those examples to to explain how those combinations uh, would work together. Mm. And I guess it's the most common uh, use cases as well. Yes, yes, exactly. Then uh, attribution, no deriv 
uh, derivative work basically the license lets others reuse the work for any purpose including commercially however it can be shared with others in adapted form and credit must be, must be provided to you you mean it cannot be shared uh, can, can, cannot sorry yes can't be shared how, how would we so, describe this in the the previous uh in, in like software license terms, th this is more like freeware then, isn't it? So, so you can't modify it. That's what's been taken away. Yes, that is true. Yeah. So, so yeah, but there it, is it's... no such uh, license because that would violate, for example, the four freedom. One of the four freedoms. Yeah. Uh, the freedom to study. Uh, sorry, modify. Yeah. But it's not exactly like freeware either because you you know you have access to the source in a way. You're just not allowed to. <laughs> to change it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, next one, attribution non-commercial. So this license lets others remix, adapt, and build upon your work uh, non-commercially. Uh, and although their new works must also acknowledge you and be non-commercial, uh, they don't have to license their derivative work under the same terms. And it, they offer a couple of those uh, pictures for different areas, so you can you have a European, uh, like a euro sign or a yen sign for for the Japanese market. But then th this would mean that even though you can change the license, so let's say let's say you would take one a work uh, licensed under the, the non commercial Creative Commons. Yeah, and then you would change it and relicense it to. I mean, it's a stupid idea, but let's say you would relicense it to GPL. That you can't do because GPL allows commercial use. Yes, right? that's exactly right. Yes, so it would be uh, inc incompatible with it. Yeah, I find it hard to understand the meaning of commercial here. For example. <laughs> since I'm egocentric as a person. Let's go back to my <laughs> examples with uh, some of my photos in, in, in Flickr, on Flickr. Uh, if somebody uses that, um, is that commercial use if they are selling a product and using my picture to like promote the uh, product? Absolutely, I would say yes. Yeah, but I'm not sure because it, it's, it's not my work they are selling. So no, no, they are using your work to promote their uh, their business. So that's a commercial use. Mm, but yeah, but I, I think this is tricky. So, but, for example, if, if if a company has a blog and they're using w uh, one of my photos in their blog just for fun, is that commercial use? Uh, I would say. We can look at, for example, GDPR also, which is mm. also talking about commercial use and non on and household use. So perhaps there is some similarities to 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 get where it really depends on on a lot of details and it, the the devil is in the details where where the the border between those two are. I mean, uh, and again, just to reiterate what we said last time. So this is not a free software and open source license either, because it it uh, it's the discrimination about uh, for a purpose or a, or a group, so to speak. Uh, yes, yeah. yes. I'm not sure even if if anyone calls any of those uh, Creative Commons licenses, open source licenses. I think they are just Creative Commons licenses. Yeah, yeah I, I'm just trying to relate to to, to the previous oh, oh, discussions yeah. of permissive oh, yeah. and so on. Yes. Yeah. Okay, then that's true. Yes. Okay, attribution, non-commercial share alike. I think we kind of understand now. You can combine them. So here. Uh, the license lets others remix, adapt, and build upon your work non-commercially again, as long as they credit you and license their new creations under the identical terms. So this is, yeah, I think quite obvious now that we've gone through most of them. And here again, attribution, non-commercial, but no derivatives. Again, uh, the this is the most restrictive of the six main licenses, only allowing others to download your works and share them with others as long as you 
they credit you, but they can't change them in any way or use them commercially. And then there are two outliners somehow. There is a CC0 license, uh, and they write, use this univer universal tool if you are a holder of copyright or database rights, and you wish to uh, waive all your interests, if any, in your work worldwide. This may be the case if you are reproducing an underlying work that is in the public domain and want to communicate that you claim no copyright in your digital copy where copyright law may grant protection. Uh, and the next one is... But I suppose this CC0 would also apply if you if you just create something yourself and you would like to put it in public domain, but you're, you're in a jurisdiction where there is no public domain. Yeah, I guess using that, yeah. CC0 for, for creative works or, or the unlicensed or something like that for, for software code, I guess, is a better mm -hmm. way to put it into public domain since the concept isn't universal. Yeah. The funny part yeah, is that the, that the next is the public domain mark. So it's not quite clear to me how those two relate. <laughs> now, and and a, a point here that I think is important, uh, again... <laughs> The uh, being influenced by my work with a German lawyer, the uh, there's the liability thing. You so this would not work in Germany, and I I, I don't think it will work nicely in in Sweden, Sweden either. I don't think you can take away the liability, and that is so you you would be responsible for uh, some damages that mm. could possibly be done even though you're putting CC0 on it. Okay. So it's not like in public domain. Yeah. But I'm Dan not sure perhaps this uh, like calls for um, another discussion with a lawyer. Yeah, I guess so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then the public domain mark, uh, use, they write, use this tool if you have identified a work that is free of known copyright restrictions. I would guess this is like a uh, really old work, which is completely outside of uh, any copyright because it's like over 100 years old or something like that. C although Creative Commons does not recommend this tool for works that are restricted by copyright laws in one or more jurisdictions. So you would need to, to really check that this is the case for in all over the world, basically, before you do that. Yeah. Uh, and lastly, there is they do have a license chooser, which helps you to choose your license because it's so modular. Uh, it's it's a nice way of uh, helping people to to choose the license. So, in there, you can. Uh, choose between uh, so in allow adaptations of your work to be shared yes no or yes as long as others share alike and then allow commercial uses of your work yes or no and then they uh, they give you one of those licenses basically to to use yeah and they tell you yeah. how to how to put, announce the license and how to attribute and they link to the full license text and I think the license texts are available in quite a few languages. I know it's available in Swedish, German and English at least, but I, I think it's quite yeah. widely translated. Yeah. Exactly, yes, that's true. They chose uh, Creative Commons. They chose a different approach than the uh, like free and open source software uh, did. The they translated as you say one, uh, the license mm. to the various different like uh, places or countries, but uh, whereas the uh, open source and free software licenses, they are not translated. So uh, everyone is using the English translation. Uh, mm. And it would be interesting to like have a discussion on that with a lawyer. W what are the what were the benefits of uh, of choosing this approach, and what were the downsides? Yeah, and I That's wonder true. how. If you, as an English speaker, were to take something that's licensed under the, the the Swedish version of the license text, for instance, 
Mm. Does Creative Commons guarantee that the licenses are are identical or compatible, or or mm. are there implications? Yeah, we we need to bring well, a lawyer. So. <laughs> I know yeah. the two guys that made the Swedish translation. So perhaps we should talk to them about the problems uh, actually doing the translation. Yeah. yeah, let's try to get them on board. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah uh, that's it. Uh, basically and uh, thank you for listening and like and subscribe on our youtube channel and uh, if you ha- if you listen to podcasts uh, we we have we we have this as a podcast for your for your podcast catcher on uh, on our website fos-norse.se/pod and please if you have comments you can comment on youtube or you can email us at info at fos-gbg.se And I suppose if you are confused by the use of uh, graphics, then the slides will be available together with the podcast. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah. So you can follow okay. it. Cool. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you.